I don't think that alone has the ability to make sure that a low pivot is in. I still think there's overlying circumstances like if you see the stock market collapse 25% in 2023, it's hard to imagine Bitcoin's not going to come back down and retest those lows. But for me, certainly, I mean, you start to see a weakening dollar that helps. Gold's pr gold price has really soared recently as well. That's telling you people right. are definitely looking for an alternative to U.S. dollars. And in many ways, I think to stocks. I mean, I think there's this growing realization that the economy will go into recession in 2023. And what does that mean for earnings for stocks and the valuations as well? So I think, again, Bitcoin is the one that people are going to go to if they're going to choose a crypto. And, and I do. I'm not surprised to see that accumulation going on. Popular technical analyst Gareth Soloway is one of the few analysts that continue to maintain a bearish near-term prediction for the world's largest cryptocurrency, despite its impressive performance over the past week. After a brief consolidation earlier in the week, Bitcoin surged to over $21,500 on Wednesday, its highest price in almost four months. Regardless, Soloway believes it might not be time to celebrate yet. As he has explained in several tweets and interviews, Soloway is positive that Bitcoin is just having a bear market rally and not entering into another multi-year bull market. Before that can happen, the technical analyst expects at least one other capitulation event that could send Bitcoin below the FTX low of $15,500. However, Soloway does not expect such capitulation to last for long. The technical analyst is convinced that within a few months from now, Bitcoin will be on the path to full recovery and possibly at new all-time highs in two years. In a recent interview with Paul Barron of the Paul Barron Network, Soloway discusses his predictions for the leading crypto asset and top altcoins like XRP, Solana, and Ether. In his interview, Soloway also discusses some macro events he expects in 2023 and how they could impact crypto prices. Before we listen to Soloway's interview, please take a little time to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications for more videos like this. Also, make sure you drop your thoughts and comments about Soloway's interview in the comments section below. Everything helps with the YouTube algorithm, so we can continue to bring you these videos. Thanks, and enjoy the video. Yeah, so let's jump into the chart here and see what we have. So, so we can see that there was this wedge pattern from the collapse of FTX, and then we went in a very, very quiet range. And one of the little notes that told us that there was going to be some volatility was that we saw volatility in Bitcoin. I think it got as, to the lowest it had ever gotten. And anytime you go into this sleep mode, there's this tendency to wake up with a bang. And we certainly saw it here. You could see the breakout occurred right there. And as soon as that happened, there was kind of this melt up or bear market rally. Now, the reason why I'm calling it a bear market rally is that until we take out key levels, this is just a run of the mill, rip your face off rally. And I know that sounds crazy to a lot of Bitcoiners and crypto people. But if you look at other markets, the S&P, the NASDAQ, even stocks like Tesla, a bounce of 25, 35, 45% in a bear market is actually a relatively common occurrence. So as of now, I think we've rallied about 30, 35% in Bitcoin off of the lows. At this point, we still haven't taken out the psychological level here, which was the FTX high. And you can see how price is stalled there, right? And we're even seeing a little bit of a pullback today, although we're off of the lows. But for me, at least, this is as of now, it's a bear market rally. I have to treat it as such until we start taking out key levels such as this FTX high pivot. Achieved. Is there anything you're watching closely right now on Bitcoin? Yeah, so definitely that FTX high pivot, which is around 21,500. Psychologically, there was a lot of damage done. We know about all the news media that the coverage that SBF had and, and FTX collapse had. And I think on a psychological basis, if we can get price above and hold above that level, that then would then create kind of this confidence in Bitcoin, in cryptocurrency. Another thing that I'll be watching for is honestly, I want to see where this regulation is coming in. I want to see when this is coming to fruition. If we get regulation and price doesn't dump out and make new lows, I would then say potentially the lows could be in. And the reason right. I say that is because as soon as we get that regulation, it should create forced transparency. And forced mm -hmm. transparency then creates the ability for bigger money to start to take positions. And if we're, if we're still trading up here into that, I think the lows might be in. I still am in the camp though, let's be clear. I'm still in the bear market camp. I still think this is a run of your mill bear market rally, and I still okay. think we'll make new lows. So one of the things I've noticed about XRP is that we've seen a lot of big moves up in crypto, but XRP has not had a huge move considering some of the altcoin moves, right? I mean, if you look at a Solana, an Avalanche, um, even a Cardano has had a very significant percentage move up. 
while you're pretty much stuck at under 20% move up in XRP. Now, like you said, I think the reasoning for that is that there's a lack of buyers. They're waiting to see what the outcome of this judge's decision is, and they're not willing to put big money behind it, right? So I think that's kind of alluding to that aspect. But one of the things I'll be watching for is you have this pattern here, this little wedge pattern, and we're stuck between support and resistance, basically resistance being around 42 to 43 cents and support being around 34 cents. And so I'll be watching very closely to see can can XRP in the next week or so break above? If you get a breakout going into the judge's decision, maybe it implies that there's someone that knows something, that it's going to be a positive decision, and that could be a positive signal there. Yeah, so ETH has had a great move up. Um, same kind of issue, though, here is with Bitcoin, right? Here's your kind of pivot high just before the FTX kind of debacle occurred, and we see that big drop. And notice how price has gotten up there and is just having so much trouble getting through that level. So for me, I'll be watching this approximately $1,650 level, $1,650 on Ethereum. Again, I like the fact that it may be consolidating in a bullish manner, but it is still technically extended on the chart and it still needs to kind of digest this move up before I get more confidence that it can break out. But again, you know, I, I think one of the things to keep in mind, folks, is that, you know, for me, it's the best of breed. So Ethereum and Bitcoin, if you're going to hold crypto into kind of maybe regulation or whatever it may be, those are the ones to do it with because I do think they'll survive and thrive in a post-regulatory environment. Um, the other ones I would just be generally cautious on, they're more for allocating the proper amount of, of investment so that if something does go wrong, such as an FTX or something else, you don't get hammered too badly. In his interview, Soloway also gives his updated prediction on Solana, which has been the best performing top crypto asset over the past week. From a previous low of $8, the top altcoin has almost tripled in price and is now exchanging hands at $21.18 as of press time. In his interview, Soloway says he has a soft spot for Solana because of the technology backing the public blockchain platform. Soloway also discusses fears that the United States economy is fast approaching a recession and how an economic decline could affect asset prices in 2023 and beyond. So, I, you know, I, I have a soft spot in my heart for Solana. I know a lot of people like to hate on it, but I do think the technology, it does warrant more attention. Um, for me, I think, you know, this is something I was asked about over the last month quite a bit going into the end of the year where it was trading down towards eight bucks. And I kept on saying to people, it's like, listen, you know, with the ability to do 50,000 transactions a second versus, you know, whatever Ethereum can do, which is a lot less, there is a fundamental need for something like a Solana. But you have to realize that if you invest in it, you have to invest the proper amount, meaning that if you're buying it at eight or 10 bucks, you have to say, hey, listen, I could lose eight or 10 bucks on this, but it could also 10x. And so there's, there's a kind of a give and take in terms of how much you invest where you say, okay, I'm willing to put one or 2% of my portfolio in this to take a shot, knowing that maybe I'll make 10 or 20 or 30% back on that 2%, but I could also lose that 2%. So it's a calculation right. there. But overall, I love the recovery here. Um, I think for me, the big level that this is going to have to test is this level right down here, right? If we look at this low, it just kind of goes right across from all these, this consolidation where we broke yeah. down. And if it can reestablish basically north of 27 bucks, that would be actually very, very bullish for the chart longer term. My forecasts are saying that the Fed has one or two more rate hikes in them, probably both 25 basis points, and then they're done. And, and we saw some economic news this morning that was very, very weak. It does portend to show a recession on the horizon. Um, we just haven't seen the jobs market catch up yet. And I think that's going to be one of the realizations right. for the markets. Now, initially, you're going to see investors cheer because the Fed is going to go back to a neutral policy, which means they're not hiking, but they're not dropping. I think that ultimately the market in the second half of the year is going to start to get very scared over the aspect that inflation remains above 2% and the Fed cannot stimulate even in a, re in a recession, right? So if we slip into this recession, my fear is it becomes a long recession, a multi-year recession because the Fed's not bailing us out due to inflation staying slightly elevated. One of the things to recognize, too, for investors is that while the markets have declined, historically, if we look at bear markets, this isn't that big of a decline. The S&P is not even down right now 20% right. from its all-time highs. And remember, the move from 2009 to these all-time highs or from the COVID low to these all-time highs was the probably the biggest move we have almost ever seen in the stock market, at least reminiscent of the dot-com bubble move up 
in charts. So, so I do caution people that at least in the very least, you got to think we have to head down to that February 2020 high, which was just before that COVID collapse. In the very least, that kind of rem is the removal of the liquidity put in during COVID. What are your thoughts on Gareth Soloway's predictions for Bitcoin, Ether, Solana, and XRP in 2023? Do you expect these assets to perform above the technical analyst predictions? Please drop your thoughts and comments in the comments section below. Also, ensure you subscribe to the channel. Give this video a thumbs up and turn on post notifications so you never miss any of our regular uploads. Thanks for watching our videos.